Hey everyone, welcome back to another Throwback Thursday. Today, we're diving into the dark and spooky world of Spooky Spud, one of my earlier creations. It's a haunted coaster experience that takes you through a neon lit haunted house, complete with twists, turns, and a few ghostly surprises. This coaster was a real learning experience for me, but I'm excited to take you on this creepy ride. So buckle up and let's get ready for a haunted adventure. As I was making the cinematics for this video and of Spooky Spud's building, this song kept going through my mind <laughs> and how much I used to love making boxes. So here you go. <laughs> I like building boxes and I can't deny when a blueprint plane with a square like frame makes me want to sigh. So flat, no style, no flair to share, just a boring old box right there. Smiley makes boxes. <laughs> so let's see where Spooky Spud falls on my timeline on the workshop. This was my very first blueprint coaster. It came right after Jormungandr and just before my Dueling Coasters project. I was still finding my style at the time and experimenting with different techniques, but this one stands out for a few reasons, especially its inspiration. Spooky Spud was really inspired by Lily Bat's awesome TMTK Neon Spooky Collection. The plane coers out there that use TMTK items, while you may not know this awesome creator, you've probably used one of Lilybat's amazing TMTK creations she's made. I wanted to capture that same eerie glowing vibe that she did in her funhouse, but man did I hit a roadblock with that blueprint size. <laughs> the panels alone were 30 to 50 pieces each. And my first attempt <laughs> was close to 10,000 pieces and wouldn't fit into a blueprint. So I had to rethink everything. That's when 
I had a light bulb moment. I scrapped the original idea and used these massive 16 meter and 32 meter video screens, making them pitch black to act as walls. It was perfect for building the haunted house exterior and separating the rooms and scenes inside. Honestly, it was a struggle though. If you ever look at it with the lights on during the day, well, and even with the lights off, <laughs> you'll see how janky it is. Yep, janky, but hey, it still got the job done. And I learned a lot along the way. One thing I'd like to challenge myself with in the future is creating a fully themed coaster that stays under 4K in size could be a fun new challenge for me. Now, the stats of Spooky Spud aren't the greatest, but I do love this the spiral lift hill. It reminds me of the one I used for Marilyn and her adventures, although not quite as long as this one. And it was actually inspired from elements of this coaster. This was actually my first attempt at making a junior coaster or a Wendigo uh, style ride. Maryland and Her Adventures is my second one. I was still figuring out the ins and outs of coaster building at the time. Banking, smoothing, timing. It wasn't my strong suit yet. <laughs> it still really isn't, but I'm, I'm working on it. You'll notice some of the tighter turns feel a bit rough, but that's part of the journey. We learn as we go. Almost everything you see here is made with TMTK pieces, especially from Lily Bat's neon collection and her workshop. In fact, she even made the custom Spooky Spud sign you see at the front of a haunted house. That little detail really ties the whole spooky theme together. Inside, the coaster takes you through different haunted rooms with Spud as your guide for a spooky ride. I did struggle a lot with the triggers on this coaster. After I laid out the coaster, I started adding triggers. Sounds simple, right? Well, every time I reopened the game, the trigger points were completely scrambled, like trigger number two would end up behind trigger number 25. It was a nightmare, no pun intended. Thankfully, I reached out in the community for help and Zafor gave me some solid advice. I disconnected the track layout, deleted all the trigger points, and then painstakingly added, added them all back in. Lesson learned. Now, I always add trigger points as I go, even if I don't have anything to hook up to them right away just in case. Now there's already a POV of Spooky Spud from a few years ago on my channel, but the sound quality isn't the best. So for this video, I'm giving you a fresh POV with updated sound. Let's take a ride through the haunted house and see if you can spot any spooky details along the way. And here's the stats if anyone's interested in seeing the stats. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was quite the ride, wasn't it? <laughs> it's funny that the stats say one thing, but as you can see from some of the footage, the guests are queuing up for the ride and ride it. <laughs> Go figure. My favorite parts are definitely going down the ghost tunnel and the section with all the creepy masks. Did anyone spot the hidden smiley face? Leave a comment if you did. I love sneaking and little Easter eggs like that. While Spooky Spud might not be the best coaster you've ever seen from me, or in general, <laughs> it's an important part of my Planet Coaster journey. It taught me a lot, and I'm proud of the effort I put into it. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, leave a comment letting me know which part of the coaster you liked the most. And before you go, if you like my vibe, then please like and subscribe. I've got plenty more frights and fun coming your way. Until next time, peace, love, and blessed be. Happy Halloween, y'all. <laughs>